Hello world, I'm Nick Proud and you're listening to episode five of the RPA show. Today I'm joined by very special guest Selchuk Keseltow. First, um, I want to give you a short message about our podcast provider today, which is Nextbotics. This podcast is brought to you by Nextbotics. Nextbotics is a managed service provider for robotic process automation. They provide professional services to suit your business rules to the letter, with a simple to use portal allowing you to interact with your bots and monitor the return on investment gained from automation. They're also lowering the barrier of entry for smaller businesses looking to automate their processes with pay-as-you-go transactional and consumption-based pricing, avoiding the need to fork out thousands for RPA licenses and RPA developers. For more information about Nextbotics, head over to nextbotics.com and I'll put a link in the description for YouTube viewers and podcast listeners alike. And so now let's get on with the show and let's talk to our special guest, Selchuk, who is from Robusta.ai. Welcome to the show. Hello, everyone. And hello, Nick. Nick. Thank you for uh, inviting me this exciting show. It's an absolute pleasure. I think we're going to have a really interesting conversation about automation. Uh, so I want to go straight into it. You know, just tell me about yourself. You know, what, what's, your, what's your sort of background in the space? Okay, great. Um, so my name is Sal Chuk, as Nick mentioned. Uh, you can call me Sal for short. I know it's sometimes hard to pronounce Turkish names uh, for about... Uh, 10 years, I have worked with technology companies, uh, mostly startups. So far, I have helped uh, the growth processes of these companies that provide solutions in different areas, such as cloud services, web and mobile analytics, uh, database management, uh, and ad tech. Now I'm in the robust uh, cognitive automation team. My mission is to help the growth of our company uh, in the global market to contribute to the digital transformation of even more organizations using RPA and AI technologies. Yeah. So uh, how did I get into RPA? I always been interested in automation and AI. When I met with RPA technology, I saw how effective uh, these two fields could be together. While researching this topic further, I met with uh, Robusta Cognitive Automation and uh, saw how passionate the team is about RPA development. So I decided to be a part of this team. Awesome. That's really cool. And so, you know, I guess the passion is is the key word there, isn't it? You know, it's it it becomes a kind of mission, doesn't it? You know, it becomes exactly. a, a real, you know, you start to see um processes which just could be uh, automatic. You know, what why are we spending our time, you know, manually uh, repetitively performing these tasks? And you know, on, on the subject of a mission, I guess, once you join Robusta, um, you were able to sort of be instrumental in, in mapping that mission out. That must have been really exciting. Exactly. I, I can see now, I, now I can see the future of this technology where it can go uh, in terms of uh, as a solution of, to the uh, large businesses and even small businesses. So would you say that you're trying to cast the net quite wide? You know, you're not just uh, targeting a small business, but you're looking at pretty much the whole uh, industry. You're looking at small to large businesses. Yes, exactly. The mission, our mission is to uh, make available this technology to everyone. Okay. And so tell me, tell me more specifically about Robusta's mission. You know, where, what's its sort of, What's, what's been its position recently and going forward in terms of mission? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robusta is an RPA company that has been providing software uh, solutions in robotic process automation uh, since 2017. Uh, it's based in Turkey and uh, has a branch office in Amsterdam. Uh, Robusta's mission is to make automation available to every organization and enable them to automate Uh, their processes without needing a developer. Uh, To achieve that, we develop our product with a no-code approach so that everyone can use it easily and effortlessly. Okay, cool. So it's -hmm. it's very much based on um, packages of of logic, packages of commands that you can sort of drag and drop Mm -hmm. into. Drag and drop, yes. Into a flow. Yeah, that's that's cool. And when you say no-code, is it it strictly no-code or is there any sort of ability to enter any sort of uh, code? Strictly no-code. Strictly no-code. Okay, cool. Because a a lot of the time, sometimes it's difficult to see the 
the, the difference between the no code and the low code element, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. what what can often start as a no code solution that we often see in RPA could can quite often spill into low code. I've seen that before, uh, mm -hmm. where where we suddenly have to write some code. But that's that's mm -hmm. quite interesting to see that it is stricter. Um, so one of the things I I was really interested in when I was taking a look at Robusta is that you you have quite a lot. Um, on your website and your literature about the cognitive capabilities of, of the, the software. So in RPA at the moment, you know, OCR, optical character recognition and machine learning, these are the big buzzwords that are sort of knocking about in the industry. Mm -hmm. So could you tell me a bit more about the, the, those sort of capabilities from a robuster perspective? Sure, sure. Great point. Um, we, we actually enable users to design more complex and uh, rule, less rule-based processes using uh, robust RPAs, AI-powered AI bots, uh, integrated with third-party cognitive services provided by uh, Google and Microsoft. Okay. Uh, these, these unique uh, capabilities include optical character recognition, OCR in short, text analytics, document processing, uh, content recognition, and machine learning. For example, uh, the machine learning functions of Robusta enable intelligent bots to make their own decisions while learning to roll as the users input more and more workflow scenarios. As a result, uh, the organizations using the machine learning functions with uh, their RPA can achieve a fully automated process. The result is intelligent process automation, actually, uh, IPA in short, the future of RPA technology and IPA is one of our hottest topics in product development. Another usage example of the cognitive capabilities is the use of OCR, uh, optical character recognition, which is a technology that uh, captures handwritten and printed texts in images as unstructured data and converts them into characters readable by machines as structured data. Robusta's uh, intelligent bot OCR functionalities are used in different industries, such as finance, HR, uh, and healthcare. For example, another example, combining RPA with OCR capabilities enables finance leaders to uh, automate tasks such as extracting the relevant data from invoices and uh, matching these invoices to purchase you know, orders and offers. It's a great example. Mm, yeah. Industry. yeah, it's a big one. It's, it's one that I find myself working on quite a lot, you know, is, is the, uh -huh. the finance use cases and, and matching data is a, is a huge, um, is a huge um, part of the market. Um, mm -hmm. And it, I'd be really interested to understand a bit more about the intelligent automation aspect, because mm -hmm. um, more conventionally, for me, when I'm developing bots, they, they usually do pretty much everything I tell them to do. It's very explicit. Whereas are you saying that you're trying to make it so that the decision making is placed more on the bot independently? So it, it learns from previous decisions or is mm -hmm. it still uh, very much uh, the developer or the person programming it that, that makes those decisions for the bot? Uh, we try to make bots uh, make their own decisions, learning from scenarios that uh, the RPA designers put in the workflows. So uh, even further in, in the future, uh, RPA, uh, uh, our bots with intelligent ca capabilities can make their own decisions and uh, learn about the errors they uh, achieve in the workflow. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I guess, has that been a difficult process to implement? Because um, I guess one of the issues that I would have is that you'd, you'd want to make sure that those decisions were good ones, wouldn't you? You'd want to make mm -hmm. sure that the bot was truly learning from from its um, from what it's been processing. So has has that been a difficult journey? Uh, actually, yes, sometimes. But uh, we are trying to find new ways to achieve these problems and yeah. uh, make things more smarter to uh, achieve those uh, errors in the process. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing that you, is, is, is readable on your website is, is this concept mm -hmm. of merging uh, robotic process automation with uh, business process um, automation or BPA, um, mm -hmm. as we would normally refer to it. So, and, and this is part of your design studio, so that, that no code element. So can you, can you talk a little bit more about that, that combination of, mm -hmm. of RPA and BPA? 
Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a topic that uh, very most people misguided about these uh, mm -hmm. details, about the details. Okay, uh, so first let's distinguish the two terms, RPA and BPM, and what they uh, represent. Uh, first of all, RPA uh, is an application, as you know, the application of technology governed by business logic and structured inputs to automate business processes. So the focus of uh, RPA is the automation of high volume uh, tasks using bots. Uh, on the other hand, BPM is an approach to streamlining businesses, uh, business processes for efficiency, and we can use it to visualize how processes are operating. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the focus of BPM is to manage entire business processes from end to end. Yeah, This is the difference between two terms. Uh, many people, by the way, believe that RPA automates processes end to end like BPM software. However, RPA is a technology technology, and BPM is a discipline. Yeah. yeah. There is a huge difference between them. Yeah. Uh, but BPM is an approach uh, to optimize and automate business processes from start to finish. On the other hand, uh, RPA is a technology that deals with repetitive tasks completed by bots uh, in the summary. Luckily, with no-code approach, robust cognitive automation, uh, use, users have the opportunity to experience BPM and RPA combined, resulting in modern workflow design, increased productivity, and decreased bottlenecks and accurate results. Des designing an RPA process with Robusta like uh, drawing a workflow on Microsoft Visual. Ah, yes. Uh, yeah. or, or designing a flow chart in a flow chart uh, tool. So Just I guess... Yeah, so that's really interesting. So I, I guess that the the BPM element um, is is more high level, isn't it? It's looking at the process uh, from a business perspective and saying, you know, this is the beginning of it. This is how we reach the end. And within that exactly. are, are segments of RPA, which is the more technical mm -hmm. aspect, which is saying these are the actual repetitive processes that the bot is actually carrying out. So that's a really useful definition, actually, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. um, you, you're right. RPA is, is kind of... Um, used as an umbrella term across everything. But then when we think yeah. about, I mean, again, from the, the, the work that I do in this space, it is very much focused on uh, business processes end to end. And it's very easy That's to true. say, oh, it's an RPA process. Well, mm -hmm. no, it's just a part of the overall BPM process. Uh, so yeah, I really like that definition. And it sounds like mm -hmm. you, your focus is very much on understanding the, like I say, the overall business rules, the overall goal. Um, and yeah, that's that's really useful. Um, yeah. So so tell me more about this the design studio itself. Then it's you mm -hmm. know obviously mm -hmm. we've within RPA we've got so many different tools, we've got so many different low code and no code solutions. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah, tell me a little bit more about yours specifically. Actually, we always started defining the design studio by uh, defining the BPM uh, features of uh, the Robusta. Uh, okay. Design studio is a space where users can create RPA processes. Uh, and manage them all without needing an RPA developer. Uh, the no-code approach of the design studio uh, enables everyone to create their automation processes easily with a single drag and drop. This is the product that we invest our resources most in. Users can also test and monitor their processes using the design studio. Mm -hmm. And another great feature of uh, the design studio is you can save your design processes and uh, copy them and save them for later use in other similar processes. And you can save them also as templates mm -hmm. to use in similar uh, yeah. tasks later. Yeah. And this, I think this is kind of like a must have, isn't it, for most RPA software these days, where we call it the, the cookie cutter approach, where we say, you know, there's, there's so many different recyclable elements, why would we not use wow. them again? So uh, I think I spend a lot of my time trying to look through code and saying, well, I could use this again somewhere, I'm sure I could. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's awesome that you're doing that. And um, doing that in relation to an overall business mm -hmm. process is so valuable. Um, and people can see the return on investment just from that. You know, once you've built something and you can just use it again, it just slots mm -hmm. in, it's fantastic. Um, so talking about business processes then, um, I, I'm always really interested to learn about specific use cases. You know, it's, it's always fascinating to me to see what mm -hmm. industries people are using RPA in, what specific processes they're using 
uh, they're automating, sorry. So can you talk mm. a bit more about those use cases that customers of Robusta okay. are, are currently uh, implementing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually we have nearly 100 customers for now uh, with okay. approximately 1,250 designed processes with these mm -hmm. 100 customers. Uh, let me give you two use case examples for our, from our uh, recent customers. Okay. Uh, let's begin with the first one. Uh, the first use case that I want to share uh, with you is from a security company, uh, which needs to inform local police departments about their employees working in the same area. This okay. process is very time consuming and mandatory, and they have to uh, inform the local policies to, uh, to say that uh, my employee will work in this, uh, for example, uh, mall to secure this uh, shop today. Uh, yeah. The police need to know that information. However, with a combination of uh, cognitive services and uh, our bots, the company reduced the processing time by two to three times per employee. Awesome. Uh, Robusta's bots sends all the necessary information to the local police department during the office hours, uh, for sure. Each time a security employee changes their working location or a new employee onboarding to the company, uh, Robusta's bots sends the same uh, notifications and information to the relevant uh, resources. That's really cool. Uh, that's mm -hmm. that's a new one for me. I've never heard of anything like yeah. that. That's that's yeah, really yeah. I like that. Uh -huh. uh, let me give you another example, another use case from our uh, one of other recent customers. Uh, this one is an asset management firm uh, with hundreds of employees assessing the real estate acquired as a as part of debt collection. Mm -hmm. They utilize various data sources, such as their uh, internal uh, database, the public city directory, the government's public data sources, and different real estate listing websites to estimate the exact value of the real estate assets. Mm -hmm. Then they need to transfer the compiled data to their internal system, which is a manual and time-consuming uh, process. Yeah. Uh, after implementing our RPA design, uh, the company achieved success in the, its processes in terms of time and cost. Robustas bots retrieve data from public sources, uh, match them on Google Maps using the coordinations, and overlay additional information of nearby essential points such as hospitals, schools, bus and subway stops, and shopping malls. These all uh, affect the cost of the real estate, as you know. Uh, yeah. Bots also consider the prices from real estate listings, websites, and their historical data. The result is higher success rates in estimating the actual value of the assets and nearly 8% saving in time spent. That's huge. That is huge. You know, it's, it's, it is yeah. very big. And that, that goes back to the, the concept we were talking about earlier about matching data and using external mm -hmm. sources. That's that's a really powerful element of RPA, isn't it? Being able to just, you know, at the drop of a hat, gather data from lots of different sources and use that to make a decision and also mm -hmm. shape your internal data. I imagine as well that that also lends itself really well to the machine learning aspect, because once you've gathered uh, lots of different sources together, you have a model that you can start doing things like prediction. You can start um, evaluating trends and it's just so much you could do uh, based on those original um, data gathering exercises so exactly. yeah that's another another use case that I've not not seen actually is is uh, being able to I mean I've seen some use cases where companies have been delivering quotes um, using mm -hmm. RPA but they're very they're, they're, they're a lot less detailed than the one that you've just pointed out where you know the the asset prices are being governed by lots of different factors um, mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, so following on from that, then obviously those are quite, some of those use cases are quite complex. You know, what, what are the challenges that you've had to overcome uh, uh, in general as an mm -hmm. RPA business? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great question. Yeah, actually myths, some myths are widely known as truth in the business world when it comes to robotic process automation. Unfortunately, these are the top challenges we had to, we had to overcome and we yeah. still frequently encounter them. Uh, 
For example, some people think that RPA bots will take their jobs. That's the However, big one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the big one. Yeah. However, uh, bots exist to increase our efficiency and effectiveness, not to replace us. Yep. It's a fact that some professions will not exist after automation in the future, uh, but in the but not in the near future, very near future. But new career fields will also emerge in the uh, in the future, such as RPA analyst. RPA developer or RPA operations manager. Yeah, These definitely. are the new new skills that uh, people have to uh, learn and acquire. Another challenge that we encounter is that some businesses leaders uh, think that implementing an RPA solution is um, very expensive. However, there are many different purchasing models for RPA today. RPA providers aim to introduce RPA to companies on digital transformation uh, with many different payment types, such as licensing, a periodic rental, and pay as you go. Moreover, if you can correctly identify and implement your organization's automated process, the investment cost will quickly become financial benefits, as you know. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, and uh, I think, I would totally agree with you that those are the biggest mm -hmm. challenges um, in the RPA field at the moment is mm -hmm. the, the myths around the dangers of automation. I think mm -hmm. people hear the term bot and they, uh, you know, they automatically think of, you know, Terminator or something like that, you know, something like yeah. some cr crazy Hollywood uh, AI that's going to take take yeah. away everything from us. It's 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 so much more dramatic than the actual. Exactly, reality. there are there are many people thinking about real bots. They're like the machines uh, will uh, do their jobs uh, exactly. in front of their computer. Yeah, exactly. And I think you know even even the intelligent automation aspect that you guys are trying to specialize in, you know, you could argue that that's mm -hmm. closer to the, the scary element, but mm -hmm. it's still, it's still miles a, a, away from the, the, the real fears, which is that, yeah. you know, it's going to completely take over. Like you say, you know, this, this opens up new avenues for people to, to mm -hmm. skill up. I mean, obviously people mm -hmm. have to, people will have to make a transition. Um, but you know, the, the, this is not a new thing. There's always been, uh, Automation has been around for you know, thousands of years, and um, it's just a this is just a new type of it. Uh, so I think it's you know it, it resonates with me quite a lot that you guys are having those mm -hmm. challenges, and I think for me as well, maybe from a pre-sales perspective, when it comes to speaking mm -hmm. to prospective clients, that it's really difficult to um, make the the concept of a bot not vague. You know, when I say, "Oh, the bot will do X, Y, and Z," they can't really mm -hmm. picture it. Um, and so it, it makes the challenge of, of, of demoing that functionality even more, mm -hmm. uh, more apparent. And so I think, it, yeah, it sounds like we've had a lot of the same challenges uh, in our work. Exactly. Um, so talking about the, you know, the wider industry, you know, what sort of um, industry trends do you think we're going to see in the future <clears throat> in, terms of, uh, in terms of RPA? Mm -hmm. Okay, we can talk about two issues where we will see a lot of improvement in RPA in the future. Uh, the first one is intelligent automation, and the other is the RPA center of excellence. Uh, we already talked about the intelligent automation. Of course, the hottest topic will be the intelligent automation with the development of uh, artificial intelligence technology. Mm -hmm. uh, intelligent automation will continue combining RPA and artificial intelligence to empower end-to-end process. Mm -hmm. Uh, RPA automates different business functions. This, uh, I will talk about another issue. Uh, RPA automates different business functions, including HR, uh, IT, and customer service. Mm -hmm. This multidisciplinary approach will lead businesses to migrate their RPA functions to a single center of excellence, mm -hmm. COE we call it in short, to tackle all RPA related tasks. So sure, we will hear more about the term COE. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I'm seeing that a lot at the moment as mm -hmm. companies are starting to understand that concept mm -hmm. and they're starting to say things like we need to build mm -hmm. a center of excellence. And, and that's, yeah. you know, it's probably something they wouldn't have said a couple of years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's great to see that that's coming into the, 
vernacular, that's becoming a standardized, uh, understood term, isn't it? Which is, is great. Exactly. exactly. We can talk about it later in another session. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Week. Like I say, it's a huge topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I would really love to do um, a, a show just about uh, Center of Excellence. And I think it'd be really good to talk to you about that. That'd mm -hmm. be really cool. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, OK, so it's, it's been really interesting to talk about uh, Robusta mm -hmm. and to talk about how you guys are tackling uh, the ever growing industry of RPA. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, what, what's the future for you guys? What, what does the what's your current roadmap? Mm -hmm. uh, we are currently focusing on investments and resources on cognitive and uh, no code features uh, in the following following years. Uh, we will continue to develop features on these issues and provide our users with an RPA environment uh, that will enable them to create process most easily. Mm -hmm. That's our main focus in the near future. So it's going to be a heavy focus on the more um, AI-based uh, things mm -hmm. within automation, which is, I think it makes sense. I think, I think that's where exactly. we're starting to, to break new ground um, mm -hmm. because you know we, we've spent a lot of time working on the more um, I don't want to use the term DOM. I mean, it's 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 like the like the the explicit programming of saying to the bot, mm -hmm. you know, if this condition is true, do this exact action. We're moving mm -hmm. away from that now to, to things like you've said, you know, the bot being able to to learn from uh, previous processing runs and all that yeah. sort of stuff. And that's a very exciting new, um, very exciting, yeah. yeah, exciting new journey. I think we're all going on. Um, uh, so, so before we wrap up, then, so you know, wh where can we, where can we reach you? Where can we reach your team? And and if we wanted to get started with Robusta, you know, what would be the web best way? Where would be the best place to start? Okay, you can visit our website at uh, robusta at robusta mm -hmm. and uh, you can also send me an email if you want uh, some more information, even a demo for you, uh, for for industry based demos we can take. Mm -hmm. uh, you can share my email with the audience. Sure, yeah, I can do that. Awesome. Yeah, I'll put that in the description for the podcast for sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, well, I mean, it's been a, a, an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I think you guys are doing some really interesting things, and I can't wait to see uh, see what you do in the future. Uh, and uh, like you say, I think there's a lot there's a lot more to talk about. It's very very much a high level yeah. view of, uh, yeah. of the yeah. upcoming RPA trends. So. Uh, I look forward to discussing those with you further. Uh, so thank you, Seljuk, for, for joining us today. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, if you've got any views on what we've been talking about, or if you've got any questions, send those into the show. Uh, but until next time, keep automating. Take care.